Welcome back to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Dr. Jen. And today we're going to be talking about laser therapy, which is becoming more common, what it's actually doing, what might be effective, and should you have it as a part of your rehab protocol? Okay, so before we dive into the specifics of high intensity laser therapy versus low level laser therapy and which one might be more effective, please comment below. Are you someone who's gotten laser therapy? Do you have any specific questions or questions about other topics that you want us to cover in future episodes? Please comment below. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because we have so much incredible topics and incredible videos that come out every single week from these PT Pearl podcast episodes to videos that Jen comes out with on specific pain points and movement disorders that you might benefit from. So make sure you hit that. And now let's hop into laser therapy. Now, this is a question that we were asked. So we want to help and dive into the research so that you better understand your treatment. And if you have questions or you want a different treatment plan, you have the authority to ask because you have some knowledge behind it now. We found this fun fact that first form of laser therapy was used in 1967 when Andre Mester wanted to investigate if laser radiation could possibly cause cancer in mice. To his surprise, the laser did something very different. The hair grew back in the area of the mouse that he had shaved and where he applied the laser, demonstrating that there was biological change happening. So mm -hmm. didn't find that the laser's gave the the mice cancer but he found hey there's something biological going on here because the mice's the mice's mouse's <laughs> The hair is growing uh -huh. back on the mice. What you're mostly going to see in physical therapy is a what's called a class 4 laser. Okay, cuz we need enough of a wavelength and this is a wavelength between 600 and 1100 nanometers which is a near infrared light within the visible spectrum in order to create effective physiological change into the, in the clinic. It's not going to be burning you, but right. it, it's similar to like infrared saunas, how they say mm -hmm. like, oh, the infrared light from the sauna helps to stimulate physiologic processes in your body because it's a certain wavelength light and it excites your mitochondria and your cells mm -hmm. in different ways because there's high intensity laser therapy and then there's low level laser therapy. Uh, a lot more of the studies that we looked more in depth at were on the low level laser therapy it's typically what's seen in physical therapy offices. That is more typical yeah. versus the high intensity laser therapy. And there's still both this class four laser, but of course the high intensity one, they just use a higher intensity light energy, um, yeah. and energy and it allows them to penetrate a little bit deeper, quicker. Uh, quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to use the laser therapy for a lower amount of time versus the low level laser therapy. But in one of the studies that we looked at using the high intensity laser therapy specifically, it was a, a review of eight different randomized controlled trials. And they just found that in general, they found benefit of the use of the HILT, the high intensity laser therapy, and found that it could have been because of a few different reasons, but the analgesic effect, or meaning like the pain reducing effect introduced by the laser therapy could have explained the improved range of motion that people were seeing, but also the thermal effect, or essentially the heat that the light was imparting into the tissues may also have improved deep tissue relaxation and flexibility, resulting in the increased range of motion. And then when we go and review the remaining evidence from, you know, a lot of which looked at low level laser therapy, there's a lot of discrepancies in what you see. See. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, just this first study up here found that even in using half of people received real laser therapy and the other half got a sham treatment, which essentially was just like a thing they put on people that had a red light on it. So they... But it's not a class for a laser. Yeah. So they couldn't tell that it wasn't the actual yeah. laser therapy. And there was no clinically important difference in pain intensity between these 148 subjects that were in the test in pain intensity, general disability, or any secondary outcome after one, three, six, or 12 months. So no different than placebo, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of where we look at some of these treatments and say, where did they get the benefit from? Did they get the benefit from thinking that something was happening to their tissues? Jen loves to point out that when you're getting these treatments, you're talking to the therapist, they're talking to you in a positive way about how... Well, you're just like, you're going through your either your story, your journey, your pain, like you just talk therapy we you're, know is beneficial. You're getting to offload a bunch of the baggage about the pain that you're going through. Exactly. And that can feel very beneficial and healing to people. And connecting. Um, and can contribute to what we call this placebo effect where 
yes. whether they turn the machine on or not, you feel like something beneficial is happening. Exactly. And especially we know that if someone tells you that something is going to be beneficial and you believe it, the belief that we know that you go forward with in treatment is usually going to have a positive outcome. So that alone could be why the placebo also showed an effect. This is proposed. Like we don't still know exactly what is happening down to a cellular level. We're looking at like it's possibly increasing your blood, your blood circulation. It's improving vascular permeability, you know, promoting the absorption of inflammatory uh, substances and the clearance of inflammatory cells. Thermo, the photothermal effect may make patients feel warmer and more comfortable and therefore reduce pain. The high intensity has a stronger and broader photo biomodulation effect on local tissues than low laser therapy. Um, so more ATP, proteins, and other metabolic substances are produced by stimulated cells, thus boosting tissue metabolism. So could there be more yeah. that's happening to help with the healing process, you know, healing tissue, healing tendons. Um, but overall, I think what was most important too is that the laser may inhibit peripheral nociceptive receptor, slow nociceptive transmission, transmission and increased secretion of pain relieving substances in the body, thereby increasing your pain threshold. So mm -hmm. all of that to really kind of say, we're now changing the threshold of what your body is detecting pain. So now you're gonna have a higher threshold for that pain, so you're not gonna detect it quite as much. Therefore, reducing the pain sensitivity that you're feeling, mm -hmm. right? Which is really powerful, but we, can, we know, and we've done podcasts on this, that you can also have those effects based on touch in general, based mm -hmm. on other manual techniques, based on breath, based on movement. You know, there's other ways that we can start to play with this pain threshold, but could this be something beneficial? Potentially. Also, we looked at a systematic review that reviewed five different studies. And within those studies, you see one that's like, oh, combined with exercise, it was more effective than exercise alone in relieving pain and improving shoulder range of motion. However, then we look at <laughs> the next study and it's like, this study results didn't, did not manage to demonstrate superiority of the low laser therapy with respect to placebo group. Both groups seem to slow improvements in pain, uh, show improvement improvements in pain severity and range of motion and functional status based on using a low laser light therapy and a placebo therapy. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's... Which can kind of contradict the first study by saying, well, what if they would have done placebo and exercise? Would that have improved more than exercise alone versus just comparing laser therapy and exercise right. with exercise alone? Right. The very next study says placebo and laser therapy showed no difference. So yeah. is it just the placebo effect that helped show the difference? in that first study, kind of like you talked about earlier, those people have a little more time, they think something's happening, maybe they talked with the therapist that was doing the, the laser therapy a little bit. So it's just, when you start seeing these discrepancies in specific studies, it makes you question how effective actually is this right. as a part of the overall broader treatment. If you're ever gonna go in for laser or light therapy, Believe that it's working. <laughs> yes. Believe that it's <laughs> doing something important. amazing for your body. Buy into it because as we've seen, placebo effect is strong. Yes. <laughs> the placebo is strong with this one. So if you go in with belief and it is part of a broader program that includes exercise, that might include some other hands-on therapy from a professional, whether it's a PT, chiropractor, athletic trainer. Yeah, you if you go in with belief, it could show more benefit than just the exercise alone. That's what we're seeing. Is it something that we would recommend, hey, go in, get your laser therapy, leave, do nothing else? No. No. And that is what we would say about just about any passive treatment. Right. As far as showing benefit long-term or helping you become more independent long-term. Like that's just a route to being becoming dependent on a treatment. And one last study that we kind of looked at, you know, documented where is this low laser light therapy most beneficial and what they found was that with bone disorders so bone regeneration is accelerated with laser treatments tendon repair so it's reported that low level laser in combination with stem cell treatment improve the initial phase of tendon repair now again that's 
in combination with stem cells, right? So can we say that low laser therapy uh, yeah. <laughs> alone helped with tendon repair? Difficult to say. And then lastly, with carpal tunnel syndrome, when they looked at, you know, using it on 34 patients with carpal tunnel syndrome, the low laser light therapy strain ratio and cross-sectional area of the median nerve which is the nerve that's going through that hand right there that's affected in patients decreased after low laser light therapy. They concluded that nerve regeneration and deployment of vascular supply affects the laser therapy led to the improvements of patient's condition. Okay, so if they're using it with carpal tunnel syndrome, if they're using it, you know, to try to help with regeneration of the tendon, we also have done podcasts on tendinopathy and the most effective thing for, you know, tendinopathy is progressive overload of that tendon Mm -hmm. is movement. So we always have to address that with the most effective treatment that we know to date sure make sure that they're doing other therapy movement therapy with you as well and make sure you're addressing the root cause of why this happened in the first place why did i get carpal tunnel syndrome in the first place am i going back and getting to the root cause of how i can structure my desk a little differently or do exercises throughout the day so that I manage those symptoms before they're coming on. Always getting back to the root cause and not just relying on passive therapies to fix you is my overall message. Thanks so much for joining us on another episode. I hope that this one helped clear things up and give you a little bit more confidence in your treatment moving forward. And of course, if you have other questions, concerns, or comments, drop them down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.